G'day fellow mappers, it's Joe Sweeney here from Story Weaver Games and uh, we're going to continue our tutorial on overland mapping um, and this time I'm going to show you how to add textures and detail to your land. Uh, this is really important, uh, it also forces you to think about where civilizations are in your map, um, both the type of terrain that you're putting on the map will uh, indicate where people will naturally congregate, but also um, how they will shape those terrains themselves through things such as farming and so forth. So a lot to get done in this tutorial. The good news is the techniques are actually really, really simple, but applying them in clever ways and efficient ways, um, that's, that's what we're going to focus on. So let's get to it. Now, if you remember in my previous um, tutorial on laying down the waterways, I mentioned that we're going to create this, this swampy area in the map. And let's just use the uh, zoom command to get in there and take a look at that. There is the area that we would like. Now, to create a terrain of a swamp within this area is incredibly easy. You simply go to the terrain button over here. Now, if you just clicked, if you just left clicked on that, you get the default terrain. If we don't want to do that. We want to right click and then we want to find our swamp. There's our swamp. Now, it's really important when you are laying down land that you also think about what sheet effects are being applied. And we haven't studied sheet effects yet, but basically they're the automated artifacts that will do things such as fade edges or make things slightly transparent so that they blend with the map. And the challenge here is that uh, when you're placing down terrain, you can see that they have fairly deep faded edges in this particular setup. So when we put our swamp down in here, if we make it too small, you're basically not going to see the swamp. It's just going to be all faded. So in this case, I'm actually going to work quite far out from the mountains and lay my swamp down quite wide and far. So you see, big swamp, very big swamp. There we go. And we'll take it all the way up to there. Right click. Now, it's put this big sort of textured and... and blob there with some plants and so forth. Refresh the screen and you'll see that it's now faded those through and you can also see that it's created some uh, some vegetation marks there. Unfortunately some of the mountains and hills are over the top of that layer. That's okay we're going to address that in a little while. Let's now jump out and let's put a swamp around our lovely little delta down here. But I want this delta to, uh, the swamp rather, to run along the coastline of the delta here for obvious reasons. It comes all the way, it's basically a mangrove. To do that, I'm going to use the trace tool. But when I demonstrate this the first time, I'm gonna do it wrong. And the reason for that is I wanna show you something very important about the trace tool that often uh, frustrates people the first time or the first few times they use it. So we'll, we'll go to our, uh, to our drawing tool, we'll select Swamp, and we'll start drawing our swamp down till we come to near the coast. Then I'm going to select T for trace, and I'm going to select my coastline here, like so. Now you can see that this is moving along. Notice I clicked out here when I selected the entity to trace. I now select here to start my trace and start drawing around. But see how the line is going the opposite direction. Basically, if I clicked here, I would create a jungle across the entire map. In fact, I'm going to do it just to show you. And then right click. So what's actually happened is the trace has traced all of the map instead of just the area of the map that I wanted. So I'm going to undo that with Control Z. Now, the reason why that happens is the trace tool actually pays attention to where you selected the entity um, on that very first click. If you select outside the draw tool, then it's going to draw around. Basically, the drawing, the tracing will always go through that very first selection point. And that's not very clear on the interface. So let's try this again and we'll do it right this time. We'll click, we'll select swamp. We'll start drawing our swamp. We'll get close to the area that we want to uh, run the coastline along. And then we'll click T. But this time, we'll put it here in the middle of that. Then we'll start there. 
And now you can see it's wanting to draw through that line like so. And now when I right click, I only get that area. So that's really, really important thing to think about with tracing. I'm gonna save my map now and I'm gonna redraw just so that we can see what that looks like. Lovely. So now we've got some basic skills in laying down um, terrains onto our map. Uh, the next question should be, what other terrains can we lay down? Well, let's experiment a bit with that. Again, keep in mind culture, where a civilization is going to lie. I'm gonna zoom in on the map a little bit here. We're gonna focus on this coastline area along here. Now let's think about that swamp area. It's got beautiful volcanic ash going into it. It's warm, it's thermal, it's gonna have an amazing amount of life. And as a result, the rivers that are flowing out from this are going to be incredibly rich in nutrition. So if I was gonna build a civilization, <laughs> outside of the fact that there's some active volcanoes around, which are a bit of a worry, this would certainly be a great place to place uh, farming lands. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, click on my default terrain tool, right click on it, and I'm going to find the farmlands. Where are farmlands? There are terrain default farmlands. And I'm going to put some farmlands right up through this area here. Now, and I actually think that that would probably come all the way down to there. This is a very, very fertile area of the island. Done. Refresh, you'll see that the rivers flow over those areas. Um, this area in here could also be farmland, but I'm going to turn it into something a little bit different. I think I might want to, want to make that jungles a bit later on. So what about this area down in here? And by the way, the reason I'm leaving jungles for later on is we're going to cover that in the vegetation, in the vegetation section. So uh, right click and let's go for a marsh area um, in and up above this space here and follow that river along a little bit. So now we have a nice green marshy area there. Notice the blurring of the sides. Might place a meadow in and here because we might have another culture that comes in and fits in across this space. Now, obviously it's a very large meadow, but yeah, we'll get the idea. Maybe put a bit more across here as well. So have fun, get onto your map now and start thinking about what sort of land masses, sorry, what sort of terrains will you have on top of your land masses? So I'm gonna keep on doing this very, very quickly, just laying down different types of terrain based on what I think should be there. For example, definitely farmlands here. Um, I'm gonna speed through this now and uh, we'll come back and then I'm gonna teach you a few additional things about making your map really pop. Rightio, uh, our map is starting to look very interesting and layered and textured, so, so far so good. Um, but there are a few things that are a little bit jarring. I don't know if you've noticed these mountain ranges here, they don't quite look right. And there's a really simple reason for that. I'm just gonna zoom in on the map now. Let's take a look at those mountains. If you notice the mountains that look good are those that have the, the brown, like the fill, just sort of touching around the edges of them. But some of these short hills that we add in and after don't have that. And that, the reason for that is the um, texture that we put down was only a guide and it hasn't extended all the way out to those other areas. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the mountains function. There we go. Um, we're going to select the tool panel from here and we're going to select the dark mountain texture, which matches the original one that we had. Now I could have gotten that by going to uh, the terrain tool panel or, or other tool panels, but easiest way is just to go straight to mountains, select the tool that you want. And I'm going to add a shape around this, a terrain, a mountain terrain around this. We don't need to be overly perfect with it. Push enter. You can now immediately see there's a there's a remarkable improvement in how that blends in, just how it looks. And likewise, these ones are a bit dodgy. So let me get those ones fixed as well for us. Voila. Okay, I'm gonna save my map. Now, what I want you to do is um, 
fire up your own map. Um, have a have a long hard look at your map and think about what sort of land uh, and terrains are there. Um, where would people put the farms? Where would they be living? We need to start thinking about those things now and then um, get stuck in and lay down lots and try, try different, um, try different uh, terrains on your map. Now, some of those terrains, I'll give you a warning. Some of those terrains are going to drop trees everywhere and um, uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, but we are going to look at vegetation in much more detail in our next tutorial. Um, but I suggest, you know, if you do lay down trees and you go, oh, what's happened there? Control Z, Control Z. Uh, I think it's two times, sometimes three times. We'll remove any of the stuff that you've just dropped down. So have a play, get familiar with what terrains exist for the maps that you've got loaded up. Um, start to make your maps look beautiful, but also start planning where are the civilizations. Okay, I'll see you in the next tutorial.